Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Barriers and Boundaries Resilience Leadership Podcast, your personal and or organizational resilience podcast. Okay, do we have this intro down yet? Please tell me you do. Uh, we're here and we shall, in general, at b and Resilience, discuss either personal resilience or organizational resilience. Today is one of those days that could actually apply to both, but I will focus on personal resilience but I'll just say the concepts easily translate if you want to process it in an organizational setting or context. I want to draw your attention to a topic that might seem unrelated at first glance, resilience and car maintenance. On the surface, they might appear to have little in common, but upon closer examination, you'll find that they share a profound connection. I recently had some car work done to my rust bucket that I drive back and forth to work so this idea of maintenance has been weighing very heavy on my mind and even heavier on my wallet. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Resilience, as we know it, is the ability to withstand and bounce back from adversity and learn from it. It's about facing challenges head on and emerging stronger on the other side. Now let's apply this concept to car maintenance. Imagine your vehicle as a symbol of resilience. Just like us, cars encounter obstacles and wear and tear, but it's how we maintain and care for them that determines their ability to endure and last those two, three, four hundred thousand, I don't know of any cars that last four hundred thousand, but two hundred thousand miles, right? The average lifespan, whatever it may be. Regular maintenance checks serve as the foundation of resilience for your car much like how we prioritize self-care to stay resilient in our own lives, ensuring that your vehicle receives routine inspections, oil changes, tune-ups, that's essential for its longevity. Do you prioritize self-care? <laughs> that's the first question. Resilience isn't just about preventing breakdowns. It's also about being prepared for unforeseen circumstances. Just as we equip ourselves with skills and resources to help navigate life's challenges, having an emergency kit and knowing the basic car repair techniques, that can make all the difference when facing unexpected roadblocks. Do you know how to change a tire? <laughs> all right. So resilience involves adaptability. In the same way we adjust our strategies to overcome obstacles, we have people that we reach out to to help us you know, get through those. But understanding like your car specific needs and responding accordingly, uh, how crucial is that? Whether it's changing driving habits to improve fuel efficiency, or if it's getting that fuel injection cleaning done, that you know brings it back to like the manufacturer settings and all this kind of stuff. But upgrading parts for even better performance, I know I've done cold air intakes on some vehicles that I've had and just dramatically seen better horsepower and better gas mileage. You know, this is about adaptability. That's a key part to both personal resilience and organizational resilience and car maintenance, <laughs> right? Resilience is about perseverance. It's the determination to keep moving forward despite setbacks. Maintaining your car's resilience means staying committed to its upkeep. You have to get those oil changes. You have to get those fluid flushes. Even when it might seem inconvenient or as I just experienced recently, costly because in the long run, the investment in maintenance pays off uh, with that reliable, durable vehicle that can last a long time. It'll cost you more in the long run if you have to buy a new vehicle than it would to maintain. So what does that mean for your life? How does that translate? Think about financial resilience. If you save up money, you start doing it when you're young, like you won't have to work your whole life and make up for what you didn't save when you were younger, right? So there's things that will cost more in the end if you don't do the regular upkeeping. By prioritizing regular upkeep, uh, preparedness, adaptability, and perseverance, we can ensure that both ourselves and our vehicles are equipped to overcome the challenges ahead. Consider the concept of preventative maintenance, right? That's what kind of maintenance is for the most part with cars. Just as we take proactive steps to maintain our physical and mental health through exercise, nutrition, stress management, 
Performing regular maintenance on your vehicle prevents potential issues from escalating into major problems. By addressing minor issues early on, you not only save time and money, but also strengthen your car's resilience to withstand future challenges on the road. As a counselor, I have a few that I, I love them to death. Uh, they stop by quite a bit, and sometimes they don't stay very long. Sometimes it's not even for an appointment. They just love to touch base. Hey, here's an update on this situation. Here's what's going on with that situation. And that's totally fine with me if they feel like that is their best way to you know, work on their own kind of resilience, maintenance pieces. Totally don't mind it. I don't mind a text. I don't mind a call. I don't mind an email. Like just things that will help them stay connected to overcoming certain challenges, enduring and persevering through certain situations that they have going on. Resilience encompasses that ability, that ability to adapt to changing conditions. You know, in the context of car maintenance, this means staying informed about advancements in automotive technology. Just like I, I learned about the cold air intake, and then I brought that in, put that in the car, did it myself. Well, actually, a friend of mine helped me, but we did it ourselves. And I just love learning and just developing and being able to do something. That is kind of what it's about. It That's how we navigate through and how we develop our resilience. Resilience involves building a support network to help navigate tough times. I had to rely on a mechanic friend, someone who was also skilled in just doing car work. You know, but having a mechanic or a service center you know, those are essential for maintaining your car's resilience. And, it's, you know, in the same way for us personally, with personal resilience, establishing a trusted relationship with professionals, you know, that can provide expert advice that can assist and empower you to overcome challenges. But also, you know, with me, I'll, I'll say this for me in counseling, I want you to walk away from every counseling session considering how you can be healthy in your decision making, what does maturity look like, what does healthy character look like, and what is a healthy, balanced uh, relationship with you, you know, with yourself or with others, you know, if that's, you know, depending on what the issue is, like if it's something you're just dealing with internally or if it's actual, you know, someone else. And, you know, those three things Maturity, character, and relationships are probably what I would want to, you know, help you kind of overcome, you know, but I also want to do it in a way that builds your confidence. So resilience, it involves being resourceful, uh, creative, and finding solutions to sometimes unexpected problems. When you face like a roadside emergency or a mechanical issue, Having the knowledge and the skills to perform basic repairs can be invaluable. You know, like I said, learning how to change a tire, how to jumpstart a battery, troubleshooting common issues, you know, not only enhances your self-reliance, but it also reinforces resilience by minimizing downtime and keeping you safely on the road. Think about the importance of regular inspections in both personal resilience and car maintenance. Just as we periodically assess our own well-being through self-reflection, self-care, and checkups, scheduling routine inspections for your vehicle allows you to identify potential issues early and take corrective action. By staying proactive, staying vigilant, you not only prevent small problems from you know, snowballing into major setbacks, but you also cultivate a culture of resilience that values prevention over reaction. Resilience involves learning from past experiences, using those moments to inform future decisions. Again, like I said with me, it's about how are you maturing, how are you developing character, and how are you successfully navigating relationships with either yourself or with others, and even sometimes with your faith and reconciling things that you're experiencing in your faith that you know didn't make sense to you before. So with your car, you know, whether it's noting the frequency of oil changes or documenting repairs and replacements, maintaining comprehensive records, that empowers you to anticipate your vehicle's needs and proactively address potential vulnerabilities. 
We do this in counseling. You can do this on your own with journaling. That's a big one. It literally makes a big difference if you just get it out of your head, you can see it on paper, and then you can just process it in a much different way. So there is one aspect of car maintenance that I wanted to touch on. And it, this part was, it happened to me with this car maintenance I had done recently, and it was incredibly frustrating to me. I had to wait on a part and it just felt like the part was never coming in. I would get calls every day, sir, we still don't have it. So totally sorry. We're going to extend your car rental, you know, and th that whole thing. And that really highlights the importance of just how much resilience requires patience. I don't think I really connected patience a whole lot with resilience. Hey, you're going through a bad situation. What are you learning from it? And then you learn from it. Okay, okay, go and be merry and just do the new thing that you, because you've learned from a past struggle. And I think with this car maintenance issue and waiting for a part and me just wanting to just kind of, you know, translate the situation into this metaphor, the patience piece, I think, was the one that kind of surprised me the most that I don't think I've recognized. And a lot of times in counseling, like you just, like you just want to help them and you know things have to be done in their time. They're the ones that have to make the, the decision. They're the ones that have to wrestle with the pros and cons. They're the ones that have to, you know, really kind of battle through what they believe and what they value versus the situation uh, and the opportunities that have been presented to them. So resilience, there's a huge piece and element of patience to being resilient. I think about a relationship that's ending. They're being patient and, and giving yourself time to grieve that relationship because you're going to go through those stages of grief when you lose a relationship. And I love the idea of how relationships can be successful. Let's say a dating relationship can be successful even if you don't get married. You get together with someone, you learn about yourself, you learn about them, you learn about purpose in a relationship. You see, maybe it's just the vision that never sinks for you uh, with that person. And that's a very difficult moment uh, to honor that person, to set them free. But at the end of the day, that I would consider that a very successful relationship, even though you may not end up with that person at the end, of, you know, and that requires patience and it requires seeing through the emotions. Maybe you care for that person a lot and you just see through the emotions and you just recognize that's not my person. Um, those are the types of things that patience really pays off when you're trying to be resilient in situations like a breakup. One thing that came to mind, and again, I have a rust bucket of a vehicle, and I like the idea of upgrading certain things to it, like my car stereo desperately needs to be upgraded. Uh, I have a, a phone holder that I got for, you know, pretty cheap online, but it's a really good folder, but it kind of sticks out compared to the dash that looks old, and it, that gets me thinking about, like, innovation and continuous improvement and there's that element in personal resilience as well you know just as we strive to adapt and evolve you know this car did not come with you know bluetooth or anything like that you know i i would love it if i could charge my phone while i'm driving i don't even have that <laughs> that's all you know old this car is but just as we you know kind of adapt and evolve and you know kind of response to changing circumstances advancements in engineering and technology, those things continually push the boundaries of what's possible on the road. I saw a commercial where a car, you can, you know, change the temperature in your car when you're not even in your car, the engine's not even on and all that kind of stuff. And I, you know, I love that idea. I can do that with, you know, the temperature in my house from the app on my phone and, you know, how that works with cars and, you know, innovations and in fuel efficiency and alternative energy sources those things, safety features is a big one. Autonomous driving, can't wait for that. <laughs> you know, staying up to date with developments, incorporating them into your vehicle's maintenance routine. That's essential for maintaining the resilience 
in just an ever changing, you know, landscape of the automobile industry. And that translates so much and so well into personal resilience as well, because there are times to let go of the old and there are times to embrace the new, you know, so it might mean knowing, you know, when it's time to leave a job, when it's time to move to a new city, when it's time to start having kids, you know, while letting go of a beloved car can be difficult, uh, recognizing when it's no longer practical or cost effective. This really translates into knowing how to handle situations and when to bring in innovation and new engineering. Basically what I mean with that in terms of like mental health and emotional regulation, understanding the brain, the somatic markers, how certain neural pathways are set, how habits are formed, how you get to feelings, development, all this kind of stuff requires maybe that innovation, just that learning aspect, a counselor, reading books, <laughs> you know, those things that really kind of contribute to learning more about yourself, learning more how you can develop your brain. You can actually train neural pathways in your brain. It can be done, I promise you. And those are the types of things that there are going to be new storms in your life. And when you have done the work on yourself, you're going to know how much treads on the tire. You're going to know if the wipers are good. And what that means for you personally is you're going to know your healthy boundaries. You're going to know how to overcome barriers that you have. You know, this is, you know, obviously barriers and boundaries. This is what it all comes back to. And one last point to make as we wrap up, I want to talk about the mechanics, the dealerships, the service centers, the gas stations. These are the different places that allow our vehicles to stay on the road. Our resilience requires multiple resources as well. For your spiritual resilience, you may have a pastor, a rabbi, a priest, an imam, but chances are they are not also going to be your financial counselor. Outside of how to honor your faith with what you do with your money, but your doctor, you, you know, may be your physical resilience resource, how to stay healthy, how to recover from injuries, you know, doing what doctors do, but your doctor may not be the person you go see when you have relationship problems. You could if you're depressed and things like that, but the point of this final point is that it's okay to have a network of resilience support. In fact, I would be very cautious if you only have one person to talk to. You need multiple people. You need someone that can help you build resilience in your career, such as a mentor, but you also need someone that has been through challenges of what you're trying to overcome, no matter what aspect of your life. Same goes for marriages and finances and spiritual you know, fitness and spiritual illuminations, your social life. Being resilient is bouncing back from adversity and learning from it. But in this analogy, being resilient is knowing what to do when your resilience check engine light comes on. Being resilient and maintenance means understanding that every tune-up, every repair is not just a task, but an investment in the longevity and reliability of your being. So stay resilient, do your maintenance, and until next time, EB out here.